My whole life, people have said you can't. When I was a kid, people said you can't. And so just blocking it out and continuing to believe, that's been the key. And then proving people wrong is the best thing ever. Hi. Hi, Lewis. How are you? Good. You remember? Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Good? Yeah, you too. Are we doing this together? Yeah, together. Yeah. Cool. Right. How are you doing? Fine. And you? Yeah. Thank you. So, Lewis, first of all, thank you to be invited here at Mercedes. Pleasure. And how is it? Finally, you're coming to a race weekend, and now this could be a really, really good one. Yeah, well, we've had a couple of really good race weekends um, in, in Montreal and Barcelona, which to be, be on the podium in those two, to be so close in Monaco, was a real positive for us. Um, so we want to try and continue with the consistency. Um, the team have done an amazing job to put us in a better direction, point us in a better direction. When you enter the car or when you also leave the car, do you or does your body give you any other specific signs? In the good ones or also, I don't know. My body? Do, yeah, your body. Do you, do you feel like, I, I'm 30 <laughs> years old, 29, soon 30. Yep. <laughs> and I remember when I was 20, everything was quite smooth and so I don't feel rusty at all. But I can imagine like you as a top sportsman, you can, you can maybe, you have other uh, signals your body sends out to you. I think, uh, I mean, I'm 38. I think um, I feel stronger than I've ever been. So I think the thing you notice when you get older is recovery takes a little bit longer, but it's not massive. There's so many different solutions today, like cold, cold, uh, cold water therapy, mm -hmm. there's cryotherapy, there's all these other things to help speed up recovery mm -hmm. and better understanding of diet. So it's not as bad as people say it is. Mm -hmm. If you look at Tom Brady, he was 44, 45, yeah, still, yeah. Yeah, still yeah. performing. Yeah. So uh, that gives people like myself a lot more confidence. When I get out of the car, I feel, I feel generally fresh. Um, the, the, I've, I, as I said, I've been training in a slightly different way this past year, and I feel a lot stronger and more stable than I've ever felt in the car um, physically. Mm -hmm. Now, then the car has not been great to drive for the past year and a bit, but now it's slowly starting to give us more confidence as a driver. You know, actually, and to be honest, I, I just wanted to ask you this question because I think it's kind of bullshit. Also, what the media and all the world makes up with all the rusty champions, uh, seven-time world champion against now a younger man and so on. I think it's the nar narrative all the media wants to hear. But that's so untrue. I have a quote for you. And Muhammad Ali once said, and I also can relate to this to myself, just remember that you don't have to be what they want you to be. Yeah. Do you think that would describe yeah. your life? I like that. Definitely. I mean, if you see how I've um, navigated over the time that I've been here in the sport, um, it's been a it's been a challenge. And you know, you have had, a, or I'm sure, so many of the cha your own challenges. I think always just knowing yourself and staying true to yourself is the most important thing, um, and not trying to change yourself to suit what other people think. I think on the racing side of things, um, yeah, the narrative has been interesting in the past mm. year. You know, it's a new sc scenario to have um, a new driver with George, he has nothing to lose. Zero. Mm. You know, so if he finishes behind, they say, well, you're driving against a seven-time world champion. If he finishes ahead, it's a win-win all the time <laughs> as well. But um, I, I just don't, I don't read any of that stuff. Um, so I'm not like, I, I don't get sucked in by the BS, as you, as you mentioned, you know, I just focus on every day trying to be the best version of, you know, trying to work towards building the best version of myself physically, mentally, um, you know, I'm trying to work on my entrepreneurial uh, stuff. I've got uh, I'm really trying to make sure that my foundation is having true impact on people. I'm trying to make sure that when I arrive at uh, travel around the world that I'm utilizing this platform that I have mm -hmm. with social media in a, in a positive light. Um, that's educational and is, you know, uplifting. And, you know, what else? I don't know what else I can do. No, you know what, what I, where I always um, derived, I think, the most motivation out of? Like, uh, when people said, like, you can't, then my motivation was lifted up extremely high to prove them so wrong. And I think the, f uh, the faces, when you look at them and they see, like, okay, he really has done it. Yeah. 
You, you know what I mean? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> you know? I have, I have that. I can empathize with what you're saying there because that's my whole life. Also, people have said you can't. When I was a kid, people said you can't. When I was at school, my teacher said you can't. When I said I wanted to be a Formula One World Championship champion, they said you can't. Other dr team drivers, uh, drivers, um, so many people, so many, yeah. so many people trying to create that narrative and let that sink into your head. Because if you let that into your head, then it can become a reality, right? Yeah. And so just blocking it out and continuing to believe, that's been the key. And then proving people wrong is the I best see. thing ever. So I love that you've done that and you're doing that. And I think that's, that's part of our role mm -hmm. on, this, on this earth, right? Is to prove them wrong. And, and you know, I remember coming to, to form, I remember join, when I was joining this team, Nikki was one of those. Mm -hmm. I said, you can't be doing this, you can't <laughs> be doing that. And, and then, you know, then I, I, turn, I think one of the races, he would say to Toto, he can't be doing this, it's, there's no way, he can't be <laughs> traveling here and, and arriving here yeah. fully focused. And I arrived and I but did the best time in Singapore in qualifying. And he's like, okay, maybe you can. <laughs> so, you know, even the young to old, you're having to prove that too. You know, and, and like for me, what comes through today, like to talk to you, doing an interview in Formula One paddock was always my dream. And I remember back in university or also back in my high school days, people told me like, ah, it's, it's so difficult in this world and so on. And I always think if, if you give up, if you give up and show them that's, that's what they want to see. And I was derived the most motivation out of that. Yeah. No, well, congratulations to you. Uh, you know, I congratulations you. to you. And yeah. I, I have an awesome personal example for you. I, I saw a video of you. You said that uh, also when you, you got your, your puppy, Rusko, mm -hmm. back then, you just also liked the fact that people always told you <laughs> not be able to. Yeah, everyone said to me in my family, oh, you, you can't have a dog. You'll never be able to take care of a dog. <laughs> and um, and, uh, and I, was <laughs> I just, anything anyone says I can't do, I just, that's just fuel for me to go and have to do it. I'm like, damn it, I have to go and do it now. And um, so, you know, look, I skydive, I surf, I, um, I try everything, even if I'm not good at, I'm not good at everything, mm -hmm. but I'm very, very focused when I try everything that I, that I do to try to be the best I can be at. A at least try, I think yeah. that's the most important thing, right? Exactly, yeah. you yeah. gotta try everything. Every, anything and everything. So whether it's, I'm trying instruments, I'm trying, and I'm not great at the piano, but I'm trying. Like the proper way was great. Uh, <laughs> I, I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God, I still dream of one day playing a lot okay. better. And one day I will be able to play really well. You're a seven-time world champion. Someone who knows maybe m most of the world. But do you also sometimes are at home, it's silent, and you have se self-doubts? Um, there's definitely... I wouldn't be human if that there wasn't ever. Sometimes it pops up. Sometimes it creeps up. Um, I have, and that's from part of my my experience of growing up. When you know whether it's the people that tell you mm -hmm. you can't, and then sometimes it creeps in. It's like that voice that comes in and says, you know, you're no good. Mm. You know, you don't look good, or you're not this. You know, you're not beautiful. All these different mm -hmm. things, and I've just learned to really continue to build a positive. Uh, a strong mental um, approach to my days so that 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 that, that can't penetrate me ever oh, that's good. like you block it you're so focused also like yeah. in a personal manner that it doesn't yeah. influence you and I don't do things that take away my energy mm -hmm. I don't put people around me that take away my energy or, or yeah. I surround myself with people who are like-minded I surround myself with people who are positive and uh, who are like also driven to mm -hmm. not to to be, ne they're not negative. They're not on social media saying negative things about people. Mm, but yeah, are there people mm, I, like when I have self doubt or when I think about things, I know certain people. I I want to ask. I, I mean, the friends and family they tell tell you always mm, the best because they want you to feel good. Yeah. But there are some people around. I know if I have self doubt, I don't know if I can make the next step. Whatever, personally, yep. like also um, business wise, what else? Uh, I, I go to them. Do you also have those kind of people around you? I would say if there was ever someone, it was always my dad. I remember I went into the boxing ring and this kid beat me up in the boxing ring. and my, I was like, I don't want to go back in. I can't do it. And my dad's like, yes, you can. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. And that was the first time he told me, yes, you can. And, and those words are so powerful. Mm -hmm. If you tell yourself that every day, then it can liberate you. You know. So I tell myself in the morning. You can levitate. Yeah. yeah. I tell myself this morning. Ugh. 
oh, maybe I can't do this. I'm like, yes, you can. And uh, anytime those doubts come up, I just keep, I would rather just keep telling myself, yes, you can, yes, you can, yes, you can. If I go to the gym and I don't feel like I can do the weight, mm -hmm. you can do it. You got this. And that's, it's just all in the mind. And our mind is so infinitely powerful that we don't even realize. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's um, making sure we're feeding it with the right, the right positive information. Like I also uh, hear that you are really uh, inspired by or was inspired by Kobe Bryant. You also have now your own production company. Is this something you can um, see yourself in the future also writing narratives, uh, writing stories? I don't know whether I'd ever be a writer. I've always wondered, like when oh. I th when I uh, hear about writers, and I'm, I'm always like, I, I would love to know what that entails. Like I couldn't even, I, I've seen a script, yeah. but I would have no idea what I would start with a script. I've written so songs, and that process has been, um, you know, learning about the, the pre, the the verse, yes. the the bridge, mm -hmm. and all these different things, mm -hmm. and and how you narrate through that, and that's been a process of learning that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't I don't currently have any desires to 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 write a story. Okay. Um, I I, I feel more compassionate and more driven to like give people opportunities that would never normally have an opportunity uh, uh, to uplift their stories, um, whether it's in documentaries, whether it's real life stories, whether it's um, people from diverse backgrounds who, you know, something never written would normally not, not get seen. Okay. And so, um, you know, because as you go across the industries, industries mm -hmm. there's less access, there's, there's little access for, um, uh, for people with disabilities, for people from different diverse back backgrounds. And we've got to disrupt that, not only in this sport but uh, across the mall. Across so the world and business as well. Yeah. So I applaud you because you know you're you're one you're the first here. You know <laughs> you're one of you're first, and that's huge. And there's Thank people you. that are going to see that, and we need to make sure that we highlight that more because, you know, my brother, I, 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 you know, has cerebral palsy, and he's the first in touring cars. It's showing we can also do this. You've been in Brent's head, so yeah. Right? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, it was Donington. Oh, sorry for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I've been to Brands Hatch as well with him. But uh, yeah, but there's a lot of work to do. We have a long way to go. Okay, and I think you have uh, a lot of work to do because uh, they give me signs yeah, yeah. that we yeah, <laughs> you have to move further. Yeah. But thank you so much for the interview. My pleasure. pleasure. Thank you so much, dude. And see you. Appreciate it, dude. Bye, thank bye. You. Bye, bye. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Servus TV on, die Video- und Streaming-Plattform.